All right. Good day, champions. This is Noble Mike Jamison for another episode of Game Time. Uh, you know we love bringing you the absolute best content that we can uh, to help you change your lives, to help you change your businesses, no matter what industry that you're in. And uh, so I'm excited to share with you today's uh, topic, which is why you should have a home-based business. Uh, but I'm not going to be the speaker today. I got a chance to really introduce you to uh, I, a gentleman I like to refer to as a friend now. I mean, we started out as business friends, colleagues, uh, but now him and his lovely wife, um, I consider them friends. Uh, they've done an amazing job of bringing some content, valuable content to the marketplace around the country. And you're going to see that in today's presentation. So I'm going to step out of the way of greatness and introduce you to some and announce to others, uh, my good friend, uh, Mr. Rodney Lamb. Mr. Lamb, are you there? Yes, sir. Wouldn't miss it. Wouldn't miss it. Absolutely, sir. Well, I'm returning over you and you take it away. Good deal. Good deal. Thanks so much, Mike. I really want to thank and say thank you to the AMG Network for giving us this opportunity. You know, I, I really think and I truly believe that information is, is what's really key in today's society. I'll tell everyone, people will say, I'll say, people are only a product of their information. And so if I can change your information, I truly believe I can change your life, at least financially. And so that's what we want to discuss today. What's your attack strategy? And it's going to be presented by myself, Rodney K. Lamb, CTRS of Truth Induced Financial, Inc. And if you would, everyone, just kind of go with this disclaimer for me before we get started. Truth Induced is not associated with any company, nor was Truth Induced endorsed, paid, or compensated any financial income to share the factual information within this presentation by another financial company. Truth Induced does not guarantee any strategy shown in this presentation, nor does Truth Induced participate in the advice through presentation with the intent to entice, persuade, or manipulate any individual toward a decision. Wanted to make sure that we give this extra disclaimer because this is not a tax loop. This is not a tax shelter or a tax scheme. This information shared in this presentation are tax law and tax code that are legally allowable to the business owners with proper documentation. And so I wanted to start out with some information that you may have not known. You as an American are being overtaxed and you may not know. And I wanted to put a few of the taxes that you are currently paying right now. And if you would look right in the middle of the local income tax, this is one of the most expensive taxes that you are paying right now. And so now that you have the information about what are you paying, let me give you a few quotes. A tax is a compulsory payment for which no specific benefit is received. This is what the US Treasury thinks of a tax. The truth is that we have such a limited budget, such a limited manpower to enforce the income tax laws and collect the revenue that the only way we can keep them honest in paying their taxes is to keep them afraid. This is the former commissioner of the IRS. But this is my favorite. You get a raise every time you can legitimately avoid paying a tax on something. And this is from the CPA, Mr. George Brown. You see, what I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, tax evasion is illegal. I am no form of fashion asking you to evade paying your taxes. But you may have not known that tax avoidance is not illegal. There are laws written for you to avoid paying a tax on something. And so, when I ask what's your tax strategy, I really want you to understand what I truly mean is what do you do specifically to lower your tax liability? And so one thing you have to know is that there are two tax systems, one for employees and one for business owners. And then in the case of an employee, they're taxed up to 12 times. There are a few deductions you have. You're limited to certain schedules. Earning actually hurts your tax bracket. You're taxed on income before you even receive it. And usually you get retired after 20 years of work. And in the case of a business owner, you're taxed after business expenses. There are over 500 deductions you qualify for. You can use all schedules that you qualify for. Earning is actually encouraged for the business owner. And earnings are offset by your business expenses. And your retirement date is whatever time you deem yourself successful. And so when you look at these situations, which is the best option? Of course, most people will choose the business owner. But if you look at the reality of our situation, ladies and gentlemen, 80% of our country chose to be employees. 
And this is why I truly believe when you look at an employee, their goal is to lower their tax liability. While the business owner, their goal is to increase deductions. And this is why I truly believe, ladies and gentlemen, that the home-based business is the best tax strategy ever because it not only allows you to lower your tax liability, but it also increases deductions that you may not have had before. And so when people ask why a home-based business, for the tax purposes alone, ladies and gentlemen, I could show you. Who am I? My name is Rodney K. Lamb. I have 22 years in the tax industry. 16 of those years I've been a pro. 14 of those years I've been the owner of my own firm. My education stems from a Bachelor of Science in Humanities and a minor in Business Management. But my tax credentials stem from TaxWise University, SFS University. I'm a member of the National Association of Tax Professionals. I'm PTIN certified, but I think it's most important you know that I'm the Ethan holder, meaning we own the firm and not just work for it. A few accolades I'm proud of right now and still currently, I'm the number one reviewed tax pro in the country right now, according to PTIN.org. And a few years back, I've joined this company, American Tax Problem Solvers, which allowed me to become a specialist and put the designation of CTRS, which means Certified Tax Resolution Specialist behind my name. I'm most proud that we have 10 plus years with an A plus with the BBB. And they say zero financial complaints. And we've been in business now for over 17 years. And so we're very proud to have these accolades as you understand this information that you're about to receive. But we wanted to talk about why a home-based business. And I want to explain some of the best tax advantages for a home-based business, especially for the investor or crypto edition. And so when you look at this, ladies and gentlemen, there are only really six fundamental forms of investing. You have business ownership, real estate, precious metals and commodities, stock CDs and bonds, insurance, and the newest, the online virtual digital currency trading and investing. We want you to understand when you look at this screen, my whole goal and what I want you to leave this screen with is diversification. This is very important. We understand that we don't put all our income into one basket. And so we want you to understand, diversify your income. That way you can really take advantage of it. But crypto owners, beware. The IRS is watching you. And that's okay if you understand what they are watching. And so this is what they'll be looking for, ladies and gentlemen. Answer the questions on your 1040 properly on page one. If it asks if you received, returned, sold, or exchanged or disposed of any cryptocurrency. It's very important that you check yes on that box on the first page of your 1040. The call spaces and sales proceed on all information on crypto transactions will directly be reported to the IRS now from your wallet, from the uh, brokers, Coinbase and some of the people who hold the wallets. They'll now be required to share that information. The, anything over $10,000 will now be reported and limited and, and reported in 2023. I want you to be aware of what a cash out is. Cash out is when you turn digital currency into fiat. And so beware of what a cash out is. And 1099Bs will be issued in 2023. So the honor system is slowly but surely going away. And so be aware of these things because the IRS is watching you if you own cryptocurrency. And so my goal is to teach you how to duplicate yourself. Right now, you're viewed as a taxpayer if you are not a business owner. And everything is viewed as personal. Nothing is tax deductible. I want you to remember, I can write anything off in the name of business and nothing in the name of you. So it would be very, very to your advantage if you were to make yourself an investment professional. And now you're viewed as a business. All of your local travel is now tax deductible. All related expenses are now tax deductible. And so if you can see from both of these examples, clearly the investment professional is, has the most advantages. And so this is why I ask people to understand that there's a du duality to you if you're in the world of investing. Go ahead and duplicate yourself and go ahead and make yourself an investment professional. Because right now, I want you to understand cryptocurrency and the virtual currency in the IRS eyes it's not viewed as currency. 
is viewed as property, not currency. And so it does not qualify as dividend income. Cryptocurrency is not a security. And so you have to file that on a Schedule B or a Schedule D, depending on where, how much you earn. And so if the business own, which is a Schedule C, then the deductment, I mean, you deduct the investment and in all related fees and costs. And we want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, there are costs to business. And so if you know there's going to be costs and fees related, wouldn't it better to position yourself as a business owner so that you can take advantage of that? You see, if you're dealing with virtual currency, there are three must knows that we want you to understand. You do not have to report it, ladies and gentlemen, if you hold it. If your goal is to hold the virtual currency, you do not have to report it. But if you sell or exchange anything, you please must know that you have to report it. And then again, if you cash out, you must report the profit and or loss, or you will be taxed accordingly to the length of time you held the capital asset. We want you to understand virtual currency is viewed as property not currency. And so you'll be taxed accordingly to the length of time. And so I do want you to know the wash rule does not apply to cryptocurrency. Crypto is not a stock or a security. And I think it's important that you know that. Record keeping is what's going to be very key. Record keeping is what's going to be very key. Did you document your gains and profits correctly? And so we want you to understand gains you report are subject to income tax based on the amount. And we want you to understand that rate will depend on how long you held the asset. And so the amount and how long you held the asset will determine how you are being taxed. And so here are four tax planning basics for crypto profits. We want you to understand as you profit in crypto, it is your responsibility to pay the taxes as well. And so here are four planning basics that you must already know once you begin to plan it that crypto is an honor system right now. And so when you do cash out, you owe taxes on the amount of digital currency that you converted back into fiat. And we want you to understand that you owe taxes on that amount. And how much self-employed individuals and in, in earned income or crypto profits are taxed at 35%. And again, that's gonna determine, we still have to determine if it's a long or short term asset. And then you want to make sure that you look at point three, track your adjusted basis for the exchange value. Sometimes you buy in fractional sales and sometimes you sell fractional. And so if you had a profit and or a loss, that's important for you to know. And then definitely you want to make sure that you know that the crypto is viewed as property. And when you have property, you have to know the fair market value at all times. These are four tax planning basics that you want to make sure that you have when you're dealing with crypto profits. But I want to give you a more detailed example of what I mean when I say putting aside taxes for your profits. And it actually means more profit for you. Let's say that you earn $10,000 in your investment. And so the first thing I want you to do is record that transaction, document it properly. And once you do that, you need to decide, am I going to pay taxes or not? And we know it's a 35% debt. And so when you look at it, you say, yes, I'm going to pay taxes. But what I'm suggesting and what everyone should do is set you up a federal deposit account. Set you up a free, let me add that, federal deposit account. And this allows you every quarter to send in an amount of taxes that you would like to pay in on behalf of your company. And so let's say for our example that we're going to pay 15%. To the federal deposit account, not the 35% that's required. What that means is instead of paying 3,500 immediately, we're going to send 1,500 to the IRS. And what that does is leave us with an $8,500 profit. And so $8,500 profit is more than 65. So we're going to spend in the name of business, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to understand you will incur cost along the way as a business owner. And so Instead of paying the full 3500 to the IRS, we're going to use a portion of it on business expenses. And then I want you to understand, at the end of the year, you're going to receive a W-3 from the IRS for that 1500 that you sent in your federal deposit account. And that will be a tax refund 
if you have the proper structure. And so this is a great way for you to earn more money. As you can see, you earn more profit and you get a tax refund if you just pay some taxes. And so we want you to understand this is the example of setting aside income as you earn. And please remember this, because you are reporting your own profits, it is the responsibility of the owner to pay your own taxes. That is not a responsibility of anyone that you're receiving income, but your own. Let's talk about credits and deductions. You know, we really have to stress that there's a difference between the two, because what is a deduction? A deduction is an expense associated with your business that qualifies for that deduction. What that means is truckers and travel agents have similar deductions, but not the exact same. Let me give you an example. Let's say you earn $40,000 and you're in the 15% bracket. That means you roughly owe $6,000 to the IRS. If you receive a $1,000 deduction, what they're gonna do is take that thousand from your AGI giving you a new AGI of 39,000. And now they're gonna put it back into your bracket. And as you can see, your tax liability went down with just a thousand dollar deduction. What if we were to use 30,000 of deductions? It would completely remove your debt and you would not have any tax liability. And so that's why deductions are great, but credits are different. Credits are tax breaks meant to stimulate the economy. What this means is they go and they come every year. And so let's say you're in the 40,000 bracket, I mean, $40,000 earning in a 15% bracket and you owe $6,000 and you receive a $1,000 credit. That $1,000 credit comes directly from your liability. And now you owe $5,000 instead of six. And as you can see, credits are way more valuable and they add more to your liability However, they are created just to stimulate the economy, meaning they change. While these deductions are actual business expenses and the cost for running the business, and they remain the same year to year, those deductions are written in stone. And so it is my job to teach you to revolve your entire life around those deductions while we find credits that fit you every year. And this is how you use deductions and credits to really lower a tax liability legally. And this is a big question that we've been asked. And a lot of people are wondering, do I buy or lease my business vehicle? And I wanted to discuss this and specifically talk about why or talk about the pros and the cons of either. If you buy, you have to understand you are completely owner. You show the ownership of the vehicle and you get the sale value as well as the trade in. But if you lease, there's no ownership involved. The, your ownership ends when the lease is in. And you either choose to buy the vehicle or get a brand new vehicle. And so there's no money up front when you buy. I mean, there's money up front when you buy. You have to remember, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to cover the cost of the entire vehicle eventually. And when you deal with the lease, there's no money up front. You have a down payment on the lease. And usually when you do that, you can get lower monthly payments. And so when you look at the tax benefits, in net cost in today's dollar to buy a vehicle, the purchase value of the purchase, the sale, the tax benefits, and the determinants. You get all of these deductions when you buy. And when you lease, we want you to understand you get the purchase value of the cash outlays, the tax savings, and the add backs, if there are any. And so when people ask this question, should I buy or lease? There are a few questions beyond cost that I like to address and I, that I always bring out for individuals. And so here are five personal factors to consider beyond cost. And the first one is simple. How often do you want a new car? Leasing gives you that big push to get a new car every three years or so. And when the lease ends. And so how often do you want a new car? And that's the question you have to ask yourself. And if you do go that route, how well do you trust the car dealer? Leasing is a more complex transaction that requires closer contact with the dependents on the dealer. I want you to understand that. And then, of course, how much do you drive? Lease vehicles are subject to mileage limits as well as fees for excess damage. And so that could be a major factor if you plan on driving a vehicle a lot or if you're in a rough terrain and end up treating it roughly. And so these are things you really want to consider. 
then how stable are your finances? Your stability is important. You may be much better off not being contracted by a lease. And so if you're not sure of your family business situation, will be in a couple of years, leasing may not be to your advantage. And of course, how will you use the vehicle? Because status is important. Because leasing costs are generally lower in the beginning, you can lease a vehicle that you couldn't afford to buy. And so you may end up putting yourself in debt. And so these are some of the factors that I want you to consider beyond cost when you're considering do I lease or not? And here's a big question everybody has been asking. How do you make your personal home your place of business? Well, according to the IRS, you must carry on a bona fide business. By bona fide, they mean the business part of your home must be exclusive, regular, and for your trade or business. But the business part of your home must be one of the following, ladies and gentlemen, your principal place of business. Check, this is where I deal with my customers. A place where you meet and deal with customers in the normal course of trade or business. Check. This is where I deal with everyone. Accept your structure you use in connection with your trade or business. In English, this just means the biggest room in your home. Because I want you to understand you get tax advantages according to the square footage. And so we definitely encourage all clients to choose the biggest room in your home, usually the living room, when you choose your uh, structure that you're using for trade or business. But I really want you to have these 11 strategies to auto-proof your home office. So see, it's a lot of documentation that you're going to need to just prove that you are operating out of that uh, square footage. And the first one is proof of admin use. You want to prove that you're doing administrative things from this area. You want a proof of regular use. This is you proving that I do this regularly. This is not a one-time thing. And then when they say proof of exclusive use, you just want to make sure that, that you're not operating 700 businesses in this same area. And number four, do not rent. Do not rent the area that you are claiming for business or do not rent to your employee, employers if you're an employee, especially if you're claiming business in that area. Number five, you want to make sure that you're earning some income and that you're recording that properly. And you have to classify repairs properly, ladies and gentlemen, because we want you to understand just because you're getting personal repairs, they're not tax deductible. You need to show how the repairs benefited the business. So classify your repairs properly to your home office. Prove your expenses. Make sure you have that receipt to prove that you didn't do it or you didn't create this. There are a lot of things that you can depreciate from your home office. So let's make sure you depreciate those items correctly. Everyone forgets landscaping is one of the best expenses. And so go ahead and use that deduction and take advantage of the landscaping. The phone bill for the home office is one of the biggest six things that the IRS looks for to make sure that this business is this, at this location. So I encourage everyone who used the home office for business to get your phone bill linked to that business as well. And number 11, of course, everyone, document everything. You want to make sure that you document everything so that you'll have something proof to prove your business intention. And that's what's important. But if you look, we want you to understand transitioning these expenses from home to business, a portion will be tax deductible. We want you to even your cleaning supplies become tax deductible. Your furniture is business furniture. All of these things are tax deductible in the name of business once you convert your home office into, I mean, your home into a home office and take advantage of the deductions. A lot of times you're gonna hear a timely record needs to be managed for many of these home office business deductions. And the IRS says a log maintained on a weekly basis accounts for activity during the week. This is how you create a timely record. So let's say you book a meal with a prospective client and you book the location in place, record it on your log. You meet with the client and log that business purpose. We want you to understand that. And then you discuss business. We want you to enjoy your meal, discuss business, and log it. And then we want you to understand, if once you receive the receipt, it'd be great to write on the receipt any notes about the conversation. And that will assist the business purpose. And then we want you to understand right now, ladies and gentlemen, the IRS is paying 100% meal deduction 
the business owners. And so here you have an opportunity to really keep everything that you spend in the name of business. And so we encourage you to go out. And the goal in this was to go out and stimulate the economy. And so I encourage business owners and home-based business owners to go out and discuss your business, meet a client, book a meal, write on the receipt, and receive 100% tax deduction in the name of business. It just makes sense. One of the best deductions that anyone could do right now is hire their kids. We want you to understand because for they're not your kids anymore, ladies and gentlemen, that we're going to call them what they really are, a contractor. But contractors between the age of seven through 17 in 2022 will receive $12,000 per child. And so this is a great way for you to really change your tax liability based on a decision that you made at least years ago, at least when they were seven. Three rules that require to have a W-9 on file for the child, and that's a free download. Provide a 1099 for income that you pay the child and file it with the IRS. We want you to understand, they're gonna tear their copy up, but you need to file your copy with the IRS. And then to create a services, a contract of services performed. And so once they sign that and you agree, $12,000 deduction per child just makes sense, ladies and gentlemen. And so hire your kids as contractors and use that deduction because you as a parent already have to pay for the uniforms. You have to pay for the meals. You have to pay for the lessons and activities. But wouldn't it make sense to pay your child and they buy their own uniforms? You pay your child and they buy their own meals. You pay your child and they pay for their own lessons and activities. Not only are you teaching financial responsibility early, but as a home-based business owner, you're keeping more of the money that you have to spend anyway. And that just makes sense. Here's a big discussion that I love to share with business owners, especially home-based business owners, because your monthly prescription is everything important. That subscription determines whether or not this business is personal or it's a business. And so it's very important that you stay active monthly. The IRS looks for a few things when they verify if a business is a hobby carried on as a personal thing or a business. And business purpose is one of the main thing, your reason for the investment activity. You must be logging these things, ladies and gentlemen. If you transport throughout the day, your route and time spent traveling to the business destination is important. Non-business diversions. This is the amount of time that you spend on things that would have, that have taken without such diversion. And sometimes you get busy throughout the day and you have diversions. And so what is a non-business diversion that may have gotten away? It's great to document these things. This is the most important one. And I wanna stress this to every business owner, time spent on business. A business day is four hours and one minute during the appropriate business hours. And so we want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, spend and document at least four hours and one minute in your business daily because the IRS requires at least uh, four hours and one minute for your business to be considered a business day. And so keep records of everything. A lot of people are not logging this information. And so we want to make sure that you have a log of everything. Business owners must log everything to provide the proof. And so really you don't realize a lot of time when you're in business, you don't make profits. And so many times people get the question, well, I'm not making anything. Do I need to stay active? Of course, we want you to realize paying your monthly fees proves business activity, ladies and gentlemen. When your profits are not recorded, when you are not making money, your activity is what you have to prove that you're in business. And paying your monthly fees proves that that business activity. But here's the bad part. If you don't pay your monthly fees, do you realize that you will lose that entire month of tax deductions? And so we tell everyone the cost of business can unlock a month worth of tax deductions. So I stress to everyone, make sure that you're checking off your list. Make sure you're spending a proper time amount of time in business. Make sure you're paying your monthly fees to prove your business activity and do not go inactive so you do not lose your month of tax deductions. Definitely want everyone to know that. Another one is business gifts. If people have been asking about business gifts, we have the holidays coming up. 
And there's a requirement, ladies and gentlemen, you just can't give somebody something and say, that's a gift from the business. We want you to understand these five things are required. And so many people think that a receipt is enough. The receipt only shows the cost, the date, and the description. But it doesn't show the business purpose, and it doesn't show the business relationship of the person. And so when it comes to business purpose of gifting, a lot of people don't know what do I put as a business purpose. So we definitely wanted to share a few business purpose examples of what you can do as you're gifting in the name of business. And one is to maintain a collegial relationship for future business consulting and ideas. And so you wanna make sure that you get in future business and ideas from that individual. This is the purpose of the gift. And another one may be to stimulate referrals and to maintain referral relationship. You definitely want to make sure anyone that's referring, you have a gift for them. And then you definitely want to make sure that you're using this one to maintain the customer relationship for future business and to move the customer toward the ideal of referrals. These are great business purpose to give examples, to give as far as why you are giving the gift. But please know, ladies and gentlemen, if you do give a gift in the name of business, make sure that you have these five pieces of information documented properly. There are seven must knows that I do not want you to forget. And one is the borrow advantage. The interest expense from the loan reduced the taxable investment income, ladies and gentlemen. We want you to realize those, the interest is tax deductible for you. And if the, the money that you borrow is going to be earning you money and the interest is tax deductible, that's a win-win for you. And so make sure that you take advantage of that and take advantage of any opportunity that you may have. Please know that your capital loss is capped at $3,000. You could lose a million dollars or spend a million, but you only qualify as a capital loss for $3,000 of it. And so keep that in mind as you invest in, ladies and gentlemen. Barter virtual currency. A lot of people don't realize that you can barter and use virtual currency as a means to pay for goods or services. Truth and Deuce now accepts Bitcoin for your tax services. And so we tell a lot of people to take advantage of the bought of virtual currency. And then gifting virtual currency. So many people have no idea of this. You can give virtual currency away as a bona fide gift. And it's not considered income until you sell it. But up to $15,000 of virtual currency be given to a qualified institution. What if the institution is you? Think about that. Owning multiple digital wallets. Transfer money between wallets. No income if you own all of the platforms. We under, want you to understand if you have a strategy of separating your multiple coins with multiple wallets, none of it is required for uh, or considered cashing out as long as you own all of the wallets. So you can transfer money between those wallets. And so you have to know how virtual currency is taxed. And the short and simple way to explain it is long term or short term. And short term is two years or under, and long term is two years or more. And so, have a goal when you're starting your investment. And of course, last but not least, please claim your income. If you have any income, remember it's an honor system, either on your 1040 short or your 1040 non reporting or a Schedule One or Schedule B or Schedule D. Whatever your situation, please report your income because the IRS is watching. Now, if you haven't heard anything else, please remember this. Documentation beats conversation every time when you're dealing with the IRS. They don't want to talk to me or you. They just want to see the proof. But back to home-based business, when you look at what value is, value is what a product or service does for you, ladies and gentlemen, not what it does. And so... I want to share with you what a home-based business does for you. A home-based business turns any price, whatever it may be, into a tax deduction immediately for you. A home-based business turns any cost, whatever the cost may be, to run business into a tax deduction immediately for you. A home-based business turns time into a tax deduction, and I love that. A home-based business turns everyday expenses into tax deductible deductions, legally in the name of business. But most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, a home-based business turns taxes into a tax deduction for you. And this is why I truly believe a home-based business is definitely value 
for you. And this is why I believe, ladies and gentlemen, that a home-based business is the best tax strategy ever. And so let's think about this. If you're already in the act of investing, for tax purposes alone, investing should be your business. I want to thank you for your time and attention. This is my time. If you would, visit us on the website. Visit us on the phone. You can email. Definitely visit us on Facebook. And we have so much information for you. And so back to you, Mike. Thank you for your time. Awesome, sir. Hey, listen, ladies and gentlemen, please go ahead and write down the different ways that you can contact Mr. Rodney Lamb at Truth Induce. Uh, my wife and I have been utilizing this gentleman's uh, business services for several years now, and we're absolutely satisfied, uh, so much to the point where we obviously share this information with other people as well. So listen, this has been another episode of Game Time with Noble Mike Jamison. Look forward for you to make comments, like the post, tag other people because they need this knowledge as well. Thank you so much for chiming in. Take care and take charge.